The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshal. Dame Fortune is a fickle gypsy, always blind, often tipsy. At times, for years and years together, she'll bless you with the sunniest weather, bestowing honor, pudding, pence. You cannot imagine why or when. Then in a moment, presto, pass. Your joys are withered like the grass. Ah, yes, Dame Fortune. Is there a foolproof way to keep her affections? But it's murder. Yes, it's murder. It's against the law to murder. Against the law of God and man. Didn't you say once, it's against the laws of God and man to steal? Yes, yes, but murder is... Is what? Worse? Once you start, it all comes down to murder. Eventually, doesn't it? But what? There has to be a murder. Now, who? Yours or hers? Our mystery drama, The Rani of Rajputana, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Kevin McCarthy. It is sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Said Mr. Henry David Thoreau, there is never a moment's truce between virtue and vice. Goodness is the only investment that never fails. Henry David should have stuck to his specialty, which was the philosophy of good and evil. When he talks about investments, he is clearly beyond his depth. Because any investment can fail. And many of them do. Investments are not controlled by philosophers, but by stockbrokers, counselors, and trustees, and all manner of experts. And some of these folks are human. Others are more than human. And still others are less than human. Very much like the rest of us. We're in the sumptuous offices of Mr. Leander T. Garrison. Yes? Who? Oh. Oh, no. What does the old hag want? I guess I'll have to see her. Listen, after she's been with me for about a minute, ring me so I can tell her that I've got an important call. This miserable tiresome, wretched old... Why, Mrs. McNeese, come in, come in, come right in. How kind of you to call on me. Won't you have a chair? Thank you, Mr. Garrison. Mm-hmm. And how is my oldest client? Oh, my goodness. Now, how that must sound, huh? Well, I suppose I do qualify as your oldest client. Mm-hmm. Are you busy, Mr. Garrison? Can I be busy when you choose to call, Mrs. McNeese? Oh, forgive me for not telephoning you this morning. I want to thank you for inviting me to your home last night. You know, it was a marvelous party. Well, uh, I'm here principally because of the party. Uh, the trick, if it can be called one, is to invite a group of interesting people uh-huh. and just observe them. Mm-hmm. You discover so much. For instance, I found out something about you. Did you, Miss McNeese? What was it? Ah, oh, please excuse me. I should have told her not to bother with any calls while you're here. Miss Scoville, I don't want to talk to anyone for the next... Who? Ah, well, well, I suppose that's different. Well, have him hold on for just a minute. (sighs) My dear Mrs. McNeese, I have a most important call. I'll wait. No, I'm afraid it can very well take up the rest of the morning. I'm afraid it cannot. I do not have the rest of the morning. But, Mrs. McNeese, it's the Secretary of the Treasury. Let him wait. Let him wait? But he's calling from Washington, D.C. He should call in the evening when the rates are cheaper. Uh, but, Mrs. McNeese... The Secretary of the Treasury, if indeed and in truth it is the Secretary, can call you back, Mr. Garrison. I 
I want my money. You what? Are you hard of hearing? No, no, but... Then you did hear what I said. Well, yes, but... Then what is the problem? The problem? Well, but there isn't any problem. You have two million dollars of my money, have you not? Well, yes, certainly. Well, I want it. You want it? It is my money, is it not? Oh, without, uh, without a doubt. And according to the terms of our agreement, I may request the money at any time? Absolutely true. Good. Then write me a check. Now? Now. Mrs. McLeese, it isn't that simple. But why not? You do have my money, Mr. Garrison? Of course. Then why are you not writing out my check? I don't have it here, in my desk, in my office. I am aware of that. It's out. It's, it's in the invested. I know that. And uh, I would have to liquefy those investments. Do so at once. But these are all splendid growth situations. I shall expect my check before the end of the day. Yes, but we may not be able to receive their full value, you know. But didn't you just say they were splendid growth situations? That's true, but you see... They haven't grown just yet. Well, that's not my problem. Would you agree? Well, of course. My agreement with you stipulates what, Mr. Garrison? That you are insured for the original amount of your investment. Precisely, sir. Now, do you have my money? Mrs. McNeese, may we speak frankly? No. No? When a man who is holding my money wants to speak frankly... I'm afraid it's a sign he doesn't have my money. Why do you want your money now, suddenly? Oh, well, I suppose I do owe you an explanation. It, it seems that before your telephone rang, and I see you're still holding on, you might hang it up. I told you I discover things about people at my parties. And I had discovered something, something extremely interesting about you last night. Do you know what it is? You're a thief. Now, see here, Mrs. McNeese. Yes, you're a thief. You have these sumptuous, luxurious, I might even say, sybaritic offices. You are supposed to be one of the most astute and successful investment counselors in town. This is an extremely serious accusation, Mrs. McNeese. For all I know, you may be. But I cannot countenance a thief. And therefore, we have come to a parting of the way. Why do you call me a thief? Quite simply. A thief is one who steals. And what have I ever stolen? That tiny copper statuette of my dining table during the party last night. Oh, I'm sure you must be... Mistaken? Oh, no. The room was crowded. The party was at its height. And for no reason, I just happened to be looking at you. I saw your hand move towards the statuette. You paused. You tried to be sure you were unobserved. And then your fingers closed over the statuette. And with a single quick motion, you swept it into your pocket. I'm sure you must have me confused. With someone some... else? Oh, no. Mr. Garrison, my vision is perfect. It appears to be such a, a trumpery, a, a little gigaw, too. Well, then why would I want to steal it? Well, you know who it is, don't you? It's the Rani of Rajputana, the Queen of Thieves. You were probably irresistibly drawn to her. I never even heard of such a thing. Nevertheless, you behave like a common thief. And if you cannot be trusted with a little copper statue, barely five inches high, I cannot trust you with my two million dollars either. Now, Mrs. McNeese, let me make a confession. Ah? Uh -huh. I... I did steal your little statuette. <laughs> I knew that all along. I don't know what happened to me. What came over me? I just felt the urge. And so I just placed it in my pocket. As a matter of fact, here it is. I put it in my drawer when you came in. Well. It was a moment of blindness, of uh, weakness. I, I didn't know what I was doing. Now, surely you won't. You... I won't what? Well, hold it irrevocably against me. Oh, but I must. Had you stolen anything else, I might have said, oh, well, a momentary aberration. A 
own little things about my house, all prettier, many infinitely more valuable than this. But anyone who steals the Rani of Rajputana is a thief in his heart. Mrs. McNeese. My late husband, Angus Douglas McNeese, was an officer in the Rajput Regiment in India. He knew the customs of the country. Every thief must have a statue of the Rani, which he worships. It is good luck charm. Well, surely, Mrs. McNeese, you cannot believe it. But that. I do. And therefore, I will expect my check. But the market closes at 3.30. You should have completed the necessary transactions by that time. I shall expect the check by four. No later. But, Mrs. McNeese... You do have the money. Of course. Of course. Then there should be no problem at all. Two four, then. Uh, and keep the statuette. Here, Leander. Hello, Arthur. What did you want to see me about? I need two million dollars by four o'clock this afternoon. Well, I'm sure you could raise. I can't. Leander, man, your position. Don't you talk that way. You know what my position is. Do I? You of all people. Because of you, I'm flat broke. If it weren't for you, no, I... no, no, no. If it weren't for time, you'd have found someone else. Well, what did I do? I booked your bets when you asked me to. I introduced you to various places where they plan high-power games of chance. Or when you asked me to. All right, all right, all right. I know. Mrs. McNeese, one of my investors, wants her money back. Now, you're the door. I told you I don't have it. And I, I already told you what to do. Raise it. How? Lander, keep your voice low. How does it look? One of America's foremost investment experts becoming hysteric in the bar. How can I raise the money? The way you always do. Tap one of your other accounts. Arthur, I'm all tapped out. He... Well, how's it possible? You know what I've been losing on the horses, the tables, the ball games, the fight. But you, you have some top people. They, they gave you a lot of money. <laughs> Haven't they been... Uh, uh... Haven't they been what? They checking up on you. Well, why should they? I'm the golden boy. I can do no wrong. But they should know they're not getting their dividends. Well, I keep telling them I'm using their dividends to create new returns. But they believe you? Yes, they believe me. But these aren't suckers, or widows, and orphans. These are millionaires. Guys who know their way around the market. The richer they are, the harder they fall. I've been robbing Peter to pay Paul, robbing Paul to pay Dick, and I... I've come to the end of the line. Uh, yeah. Lend me the two million. Why? I need room to maneuver. I need time. Now, if I don't pay this old hag her money this afternoon, she'll start to scream and the whole house of cards will come tumbling down. Ah, uh, I understand your problem. If I can only get rid of her, I can keep things going. Look, I'm attracting new capital every day. Now, come on, Arthur. What do you say? Well, I'm speaking for myself and my associates. I say No? No? How can you say no? I've got a gold mine. You had a gold mine. But you also have a disease. And it's the kind of disease that completely ravages a man and finally kills him. Oh, you are in the terminal stages. I just can't stand by and allow this dreadful woman to bring me disgrace. Even send me to jail. Uh, it is a problem, Leander. There's no question about it. Suppose we could get rid of her? Why would I want to get rid of her? I'm just talking. There are people who, who arrange these things. What things? You know what things. You know what I mean. Yes, and I think we should end this aspect of the discussion. What else is there to discuss? You know such people. You're tied in with the mob. The, the mob? All right, call it what you want. The underworld. People who can get rid of people who are troublesome. Leander... I think you're becoming troublesome. I'm desperate. Believe me. I believe you, but I can't help you. You're a chump and a sucker. You had it all, and you blew it. You had a million calls, Mr. Garrett. Good I, Miss Coble. Are you all right, sir? Yes, 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 I'm fine. I'm fine. Is that clock right? Oh, it's always right. It's exactly one o'clock. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Carrigan wants you to prepare a portfolio for him. That's the Mr. Carrigan. And they want to do a TV program about you. It's that big network show. No, no, I'll get to all that presently, Miss Coble. Meantime, I... I don't want to be disturbed for a while. No, I understand. Mm. 
Oh, uh, let me have several sheets of my personal stationery. I want to write a note. Oh, yes, sir. Here you are. Thank you, Miss Scoville. To whom it may concern, I look at the irreparable ruin of my life. And I see there is nothing I can do but end it. I have squandered my talents, corrupted my character, debased my ideas and betrayed the trust of my clients and friends. I pray for forgiveness of above and here below. Leander Tecumseh Garrison. Put away the gun. What? Put away the gun. Who? Who's that? You prayed. I have answered. Who? Who are you? Who are you? To begin with, you know we're not in the habit of killing off our leading characters in the first act. Nor do we provide key answers to strategic questions this early in the game, either. However, we do give you all the leads and clues. And you have already met whoever it is that is speaking. Oh, yes, you have. Just think. And I'll be back to check you out with Act Two shortly. golden boy, the wizard of Wall Street. There were bulls and there were bears, but he was an eagle. And they all crowded around him. Take my money and make me rich, they clamored. And he took their money. And he made them wealthy beyond their dreams of avarice. But it was all on paper. And only he knew the paper was false. And he also knew that one day there would be a reckoning. And that just before the dawn of that day, he would have to settle the accounts. The golden boy would have to settle it with lead. Put away the gun. Who is that? You prayed. I had answered. Who are you? Where are you? You are looking at me. I am on your desk. What? I am the Rani. The Rani of Rajputana. A statue? That little statuette? That little copper thing? It's talking to me. It can't be. Why can it not be? For chance. You prayed. I heard. I, I... But now you must put away the revolver. Carefully. No. It is not my imagination. I am the Rani. The Rani? The queen of the thieves. I didn't pray to you. Who else did you pray? Who, to the Almighty? Yes, yes, of course. But you have rejected his answer. His answer? His answer. Won't you go to Mrs. McKean's, confess, and beg for mercy? How can I do that? That was his answer. Was it not? Yes. It was unacceptable. So you prayed to me. I don't recall. You liked my answer better. Your answer? What answer? Go to Mrs. McNeese and kill her. Oh, no. Why, oh, no. You must go to Mrs. McNeese. Is that not so? Yes. And when you get there, you can do one of two things. Ask her for mercy or kill her. Please. And you have already decided to kill her. But I, I, I'm not a killer. Of course you are. You are one of my thieves. I wouldn't know how to kill anyone. I'll show you. But murder? <laughs> I hear the same tone in your voice. <laughs> what tone? It's just as you sounded years ago when for the first time you said, but steal, <laughs> remember? Yes, yes, but, but 
But stealing isn't... Isn't? What? A bag? It comes to the same thing in the end, no? There must be a murder now. Yours or hers? Which do you choose? I, I, I... Poor foolish Leander Tecumseh Garrison, you think to hide the truth from me, the Rani of Rajputana, the Queen of Thieves. I shall tell you how to kill her. But it won't do me any good to kill her. It will save you. Nothing will save me. Suppose I did kill her. You would be free. I'll never be free. <laughs> You're thinking about that old-fashioned spirit called conscience. Forget her, my son. She has practically gone out of style. See these messages on your desk? How all these people want you to take their money? Take it. And what will I do with it? Gamble it away? I have this affliction. I'll never be free. That's why you need me to help you. At four o'clock, she will be alone in her apartment. Kill me. No. See the newspaper on your desk? East side killer strikes again. He is one of my thieves. He will help you. Help me? What do you mean? He will take the blame. He doesn't mind. One more murder. But I... He robs and kills wealthy people. They will think he killed Mrs. McNeese. Ah, you know who that is? You must answer it. Answer. Uh, hello? Uh, Mr. Garrison? Ah. Oh, yes. Shall I expect you at four? At four. Or shall I telephone my attorney? Now, why would you do a thing like that? I wouldn't if you came here prepared to make a settlement. But I am prepared. Good. I will see you at four and we'll settle. Yes, Mrs. McNeese. We'll settle. This brutal psychopath I'm reading from the paper preys upon the wealthy. Not satisfied with robbing his victims, he must also kill them. <laughs> so you see, Leander, your course of action is clear. Yes, yes, I see it. Clearly. I know what I must do. I know the answer, not your answer, but the true answer. I'll confess to her. You go to prison. I belong in prison. You'll die in prison. Oh, my mind's made up, yes. Yes, I have sinned. I must pay. You have sinned. You must pay. Those were her words. Who? Whose words? Your mother's words. Your strict mother. Your righteous mother. How you hated her. I didn't hate her. That's why you became a gambler and a thief. It isn't true. You're talking to me, Varani. You were going to show her. I brought her happiness, joy. I became successful. Wealthy, thank you. Yes, you built a glorious, glamorous palace, but underground, where it can't be seen, the foundation rests on sand. Beneath the gilded paint, the wood is rotten. From the beginning, you lied, cheated, stole, hoping to be caught. No, that's crazy. Why would I want to be caught? To pay back your mother. But it was all in vain. She went to her grave believing in your goodness, convinced that her teaching had guided your life. I am going to confess to Mrs. McNeese. Are you? And take what's coming to me. Take your medicine like a man. That's what Mother always said. Now, it's over. And I feel relieved. I no longer have to maintain this fantastic pretense. Don't worry. I'll save you. Yes? Uh, Mr. Garrison, the president of the State University is calling. They want to give you an honorary degree and to ask you to speak at the commencement ceremonies. Tell him uh, I'm out. <laughs> You're going to give that up? The publicity, the power, the undulation of the crowd? Yes. Would you like to bet? Yes. You're incorrigible. You simply cannot resist a losing wager. We'll see. Of course. <laughs> Mr. Garrison, at exactly 4 p.m. Well, are you prepared to settle? 
Yes, Mrs. McNeese. I assume you have my certified check or other equally valid document. Well, Mr. Garrison? Do it. Do it now, quickly, before someone blunders along. Mr. Garrison? This is the moment. Uh, Mr. Garrison? Are you ill, Mr. Garrison? Mr. Garrison. What are you doing? It's that candlestick. No, don't kill me. I have to kill you. Why? Why? Don't stop the talk. I can't return your money. I don't want to go to jail. Would you rather go to hell? Save me, Mrs. McNeese. Please, save me. How can I save you? Don't let me do this to you. Stop me from killing you. How? Fight her. Fight who? The Rani. The Rani of Rajputana. The Rani? Yes. Yes. She's telling me to kill you. She what? <laughs> Listen. Listen. Listen to what? She's laughing. Don't you hear her? Oh, my poor boy. My poor boy. Save me. Don't send me to prison. But I must. Send you to prison. The money you can afford to lose it. I can. But there are others. End this pointless argument. End it. You must be stopped. I won't be disgraced. But you are disgraced. I won't go to prison. But you belong in prison. That's how you will make amends and be forgiven. You will teach. Teach? Those less fortunate than you. Who could be more unfortunate than I am? Yes, but you created your misfortune. Others are doomed to a life of ignorance, poverty, and crime from birth. They will be your companions in prison. Teach them. Teach them what? The things that you know. Mathematics, reading skills. Yes. Yes, yes. A teacher. A missionary to those in the dark. Whose minds have never been illumined by the light of learning. I'll do it. No. I'm saved. Mrs. McNeese, you have saved us both. Will you bet? Leander, you will see. It is the right thing to do. Yes. Yes. Rollo Byrne, the district attorney, is a dear friend of mine. He will arrange for a quiet surrender and confession on your part. Now let us discuss it with him, shall we? No, what is Rollo's private number? Disgrace, ruin, prison. Is that what you mean? All you need is time. A little bit of time. You can cover your tracks. You're doing the right thing, Leander. I am proud of you. Like a man. Come involved with murder, there are three stages when things can go wrong. Before, during, or after. These, of course, are similar to the three acts of a play, which means that life imitates art, or that art imitates life. In any event, we've had the before and during. Now we shall be concerned with the after, which comes in its natural place. Act three. The 
ultimate argument is the lethal blow. And thus the dispute is settled forever. And to death it matters not who was right and who was wrong. Death accepts all, regardless. However, there still may remain a problem. A problem with the living. Every assassin faces that particular problem, doesn't he? Hello? Hello? I killed her. Yes. What am I going to do now? Knock some of the furniture over. Do it. Uh. Good. Now, break up some glassware. Now, take off her diamond rings. But that's what the East Side Killer would do. Her rings, the diamond brooch, and the bracelet. Oh. Put it in your pocket. Yeah. Oh, her purse. She usually carries several hundred dollars with her. I better go. No, no, no. Open your briefcase. Mm. Those little silver dishes. Yes. Yeah. Mm. That diamond encrusted box. Take it. Now. Take everything. Now I have to go. Where's the back door? Oh, you fool, no. Out the front. The front? Don't deny you were here. You had a four o'clock appointment. You transacted your business, and you left. It was just before the killer arrived. You must not deny that you were here. No. No. Go. I killed her. Did you have a choice? No. No. I have no choice. Spoken like a true subject of the Rani of Rajputana. Good morning, Mr. Garrison. Miss Colvin. Oh, I feel so bad. I, I'm just sick about it. To think she was here just yesterday. Oh, what are you talking about, Miss Colvin? Oh, then you don't know. Uh, what is it? Well, it's Mrs. McNeese. What about Mrs. McNeese? Well, she... She's dead. Dead? Yes, sir. She... She was murdered. Murdered? Oh, no. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. How did it happen? When? It's, it's in the paper. Late yesterday afternoon. Oh, let me see it, please. Oh, here you are. I should be in my office. Uh, yes, sir. I, I don't want to be disturbed by anyone for any reason. I understand, sir. <laughs> Wealthy widow robbed and murdered. Is she the East Side Killer's latest victim? Of course she is. Mrs. Angus Douglas McNeese was killed by an intruder late yesterday afternoon. The killer made off with her jewelry, about eight hundred dollars in cash, plus some other valuable items. And now, put away the paper. You're finished with it. Finished? Yes. No one suspects you. Why should they? <sighs> Now, pray to me. Pray to you. <laughs> you have been praying to me since she walked in here yesterday morning. Place me on your desk. I'm your queen now. When you need my help, look at me. Pray to me. Yes. Yes. Now, get busy and make some more money. Mrs. Lewis? Yes, I am, Sergeant. And where were you? Wednesdays. I'm off from noon on. You left at noon? I did. Where did you go? To my married sister's house. She's having trouble with her daughter, so I thought... Uh, oh, when, yeah. when did you get back here? Uh, I spent the night. At your sister's? Yes. You see, I wanted to acquaint Mary Ann, my niece, with the facts of life. My sister simply cannot say the things that must be said uh, to a young girl. Yes, yes. But... Well, you came back here when? It was 8 a.m. Oh, Mrs. McNeese would raise the devil with me if I was ever late. I came in. I screamed. Mm -hmm. And someone called the police. Uh, you told the foot patrolman that you found the body on the floor. Her jewelry gone and her purse empty. Yes. What else was missing? Well, what else? A few small silver dishes. A little box with jewels in it, you know. The stuff that's obviously worth money. And that a crook would sort of stuff in his pocket. Uh, anything else? Yes. 
I didn't see it around, and I still don't, so I guess he took it, too. Although, for the life of me, I can't figure out why. Uh, what's that? It's the, um, uh, Rani, something, the Rani Abrajput, uh, <laughs> some such place, whatever she called it. Uh, yes, but, uh, what is it? It's a little statue. It was about five or six inches high. Mm-hmm. What kind of statue? Ugly little thing. One of them very heathen-looking women. You know the kind. <laughs> uh, made out of brass or copper or something like that. Uh, valuable? No, you could see it was cheap. I used to say to her, Miss McNeese, with all the nice things you got, why do you hold on to that cheap homely Rani or whatever? And she'd say, oh, she's magic. <laughs> well, the old girl was getting on in years and maybe a bit soft, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, and uh, that was taken to... Well, that beats me why anyone would waste time on it. I mean, uh, who'd buy it off them? <laughs> Did you, uh, you know if she had an appointment with anyone yesterday that you know of? Oh, yes, Mr. Garrison. Mr. Garrison? He's a big guy in the stock market or something. And he was here? He's supposed to be here at four o'clock. Do you know why? Business, I guess. Sergeant, do you figure maybe it was that east side killer? Mr. Garrison, huh? Sergeant Cassano, 27th Precinct. Oh. He wants to see you, sir. Uh Uh-huh. Did you ask him why? Well, in connection with Mrs. McNeese's murder. Uh Uh-huh. Well, um, have him wait. Why should he wait? What does he want? What's the matter with you? How much does he know? Nothing. But then why is he here? Routine. He must know something. He does. Well, then you admit he knows something. (laughs) All he knows is that you were there. Isn't that enough? You can't deny that you were there. Yes, you don't start to unravel. Why was I there? Business. Have him come in. What kind of business? She was an old client. You had lots of business. Uh, no, 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 no. He knows something. He knows nothing. I'm scared. Don't be. I'll give myself away. You won't. I'll help you through. You must. Please. I will. Now have him come in. Go ahead. Pick up the phone. Go ahead. Say it. Miss Scoville. Yes, sir. Uh, have the officer come in. <laughs> See, your voice sounded good. Strong. Now remember, he's just a policeman. That's right. How much can he take home? Three hundred a week? Uh, it's that much. And he's going to match wit with you. No way. Put him in his place. Watch me. Come in, please. Uh, thank you. Please be seated. Now, you are... A Sergeant Cassano. Homicide. Please. Mm-hmm. Your commissioner is an old friend of mine. I assume this is about poor Mrs. McNeese. Hey, yes, sir. Master piece of business, that. Stop it. You knew her, of course. Oh, yes. Yes, as a client and as a friend. And when did you last see her? When? Don't put it on. You don't have to think. Just come right out with it. Yesterday afternoon. Uh, that's uh, close to the time of the murder. Yes, yes, I know. Uh, if only I'd stayed there just a little bit longer, I would have been there. I could have helped her. Or perhaps had he seen me, the killer would not have come in. I feel so guilty. Well, uh, how long did you stay there? Oh, I don't know. I don't think it was three minutes. The purpose of the visit was to obtain her signature, and so she signed the paper, and I said, I must run. I have an appointment. That was a lie. I know you want to make it sound good, but be careful. A lie? Oh, well, that's why I feel guilty. You see, she could talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, and I just wanted to get out of there. Oh. If only I'd stay. All right, that's enough. You've made the point. So, uh, you came in, you gave her the paper, she signed it, and you left. That was the exact sequence of events. Yes, and, uh, when you left, you didn't happen to see anybody hanging around? No. Or hear anyone? No. Keep a straight face. He really has nothing more to ask. He has to be satisfied. He's making up his mind. Well, Mr. Garrison. He's made up his mind. I guess that's all. Goodbye, Mr. Garrison. You will worship me always. 
You advise Sergeant Cassano. Uh, Mr. Garrison, uh, what is that uh, little brass or is it the uh, copper statue on your desk? It looks like... It looks like what? Looks like the thing Mrs. Lewis... Was... Don't touch that. Put that down. Well, it fits the description of... Uh, so where did you get this? Tell him. He gave it to you as a present. Tell him anything. Put it down. It's a holy statue. It's my Rani of Rajputana, my goddess. Uh, Mr. Garrison, I'm only She asking. is a sacred goddess, my goddess. You're defiling my goddess. Now, now, just a second. The queen of thieves. And you're a policeman. You've polluted her. Put it down. Mr. Garrison. I said put her down. Put her down, or I'll kill you. He shouldn't have said that, because one word led to another. And then he swung at Sergeant Cassano. He was arrested. Mrs. Lewis identified the statuette, and the whole truth came out. Everyone talked about it. And then it was soon forgotten. Now, nobody even talks about it anymore. I'll be back shortly. Appearances. Appearances. So much of the time, that's all that counts. Appearances. Men and even nations radiate strength and power, and we fear and respect them for it. And yet, all the while, the center is hollow. Our cast included Kevin McCarthy, Marion Seldes, Joan Shea, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.